Hello everyone, this is the solutions for Electorals 9 and let's get into it. So question one comes in five parts. I will do this, uh, I think as a single recording, I guess. Determine the angle of twist in radians if a solid shaft with a shear modulus of 80 gigapascals, uh, so, uh, so we've got a solid shaft there, a diameter of 100 millimeters, length of two, mil two meters, it twists by two degrees over its entire length. So this is um, a question where we'll pick up um, different parts of a tors the torsion equation and first thing is uh, working out what um, the angle of twist will be. So we know that uh, we can twist it by two degrees over its entire length um, and all it's asking for us in the first part is to work out the angle of twist in radian. So we've been given lots of information here. But that's all we need to solve. So that should be a straightforward calculation. Pause your video and when you've got your answer, uh, press play. Okay, so for those of you that want the answer, we are going to substitute now two degrees in there. Um, I've used two pi over 360, you could use pi over 180. And you wouldn't get your answer in radians. Why do we need this uh, angle twist in terms of radians? Because when we come to use the torsion equation, it has to be in radians, the angle of twist. So the next part to the question is, uh, let's have a look at it at the top. We've got to determine the maximum shear stress in the torsion solid shaft. <clears throat> so we want to look at our torsion equation, um, the maximum shear stress. So this is the shear stress here. Let's have a different color. Um, is here and uh, so that's what we're, we we want to look for, and then we we want to look at what other information we've got. So we've got the diameter, which of course is going to be um, uh, what we. Uh, We've got the radius rather, which can be half the diameter. So we've got this term here. Uh, we've got the shear modulus, which is the G. We've got the angle of twist, which we've just calculated, and we've got the length. So we can see that uh, it's going to be these two parts of the torsion equation that we use. So we look back at our angle of twist in radians and you should have enough information there to rearrange that equation to find what the maximum amount of shear stress this shaft can take. Okay, for those of you that want to see the answer, we are going to just look at these two columns, the torsion equation. We we'll rearrange it so that the R comes over to the right hand side and we've just got our shear term by itself. And now we can plug in our numbers. So the 100 millimeters becomes 50 millimeters in terms of radius, which becomes 0 0.05 in terms of meters. So I'm using SI units here. They've got 80 times 10 to the 9. Uh, for my pascals, it's my angle of twist there, and my length is two meters. 
So that should give me 69.8 megapascals. Now we want to find the polar second moment of area. Okay, so we assuming that we've got an, an ordinary shaft here, it's, we've told it's sh sh uh, solid shaft, <coughs> so we can assume it's circular. So just look up our polar second moment of area equation, which uh, you should find in your formula booklet. So that gives me pi d to the 4 divided by 32. So pause the video, put that in your calculator, and see if you can get the right answer. So here we are using diameter, so we're going to use the 100 millimeters. I'm going to work in SI units again, so 100 millimeters is 0.1 meters. So that gives me, and that's incorrect, isn't it? so that gives me uh, the answer in terms of uh, meters to the power of 4. Determine the torque that can be transmitted by the shaft. So here we're looking for the torque. <coughs> We've just calculated the polar second moment of, of um, area. So we've got a choice of whether we want to use uh, this column here or this column here to put our data in. Now, of the two, probably the best choice would be to choose this one because this was a derived result that I calculated, whereas this comes from all original data. Um, although I have done a conversion on my angle twists, but two calculations to get to here, one calculation to get to here, so less likely to go wrong with this data here. So use the angle twist data we got. Use the uh, polar second moment of area, which we calculated previously. Pause video, and you should be able to work out how much torque can be transmitted. So I'm going to use the first and the third column. I'm going to rearrange it so that the J now comes up onto the right hand side. Put in my data. So, uh, well that's my J actually there. I've put it in a slightly wrong order. But uh, that's my J, and then my G is going to be the 80, and then the angle of twist divided by the length 2, and I get 13.7 kilonewton meters. Determine the power that can be transmitted by the solid shaft. So in this case. Um, we're going to use that power is the torque times by the angular velocity that the shaft can spin at. So that's the amount of torque that the shaft can transmit times by that. So that would be the maximum power that can be transmitted. So previously we found that the maximum torque was 13.7 kilonewton meters. So we need to find the angular velocity. Now the question is slightly changed here and, in, and that is going to give me a bit more details. We're saying that it rotates at 300 uh, RPM revs per minute. So what I need to remember here is that the angular velocity needs to be in rads per second. So we're going to need to do a conversion of this 300 from revs per minute to rads per second. So pause the video, see if you can do those calculations. And when you're ready, press play. So for my conversion um, from my RPM into rads per second, I need to say that one revolution 
is 2 pi. And I'm working in one minute, so one minute has 60 seconds. So I'm going to multiply it by 2 pi and then divide it by 60. And this gives me an angular velocity of 31.4 rads per second. So I'm now ready to put those two numbers in to find out what would be the maximum power that could be transmitted, which is uh, 430 kilowatts. Okay, so that's uh, about it, I think. Yeah, so I don't really want to do anything else. That's um, That was uh, question one. Came in five individual parts. Very similar to a work solution problem that you would have hopefully have done.